Let's continue talking about measuring outcomes and incidence and prevalence, and let's see how these two are related. And we're going to do this by taking an analogy of a bathtub. So here we've got a bathtub here with the faucet, and this copper pipe represents the drain, and the bathtub represents the community. So let's put some water in this tub. And this water represents the prevalence of disease. So the more water that's in the tub, the more disease prevalence is there. The less water, then the less uh, prevalence is there. Now remember, prevalence represents the burden of disease in a community. That means how many people have that disease. So the more water that's in this tub, that means that uh, the more people have the disease. So we can get rid of water from the tub by draining it, and that's going to, of course, lower the level in the tub. So now we have less prevalence because we've gotten rid of some of this water in the, in the tub. So how do you get rid of water from the tub? How do you drain it? Well, there's really two ways to get rid of people who have the disease. They can either be cured or they can die. So there's two ways. One of them is good and one of them is bad. So what is, this, what is the implication of this? Well, if you come up with some sort of therapy that actually prevents deaths, which you would assume would be a good thing, right? Preventing death always sounds like a good thing. The effect that it's going to actually have is decreasing the amount of people that we remove by dying, and it's going to, in essence, increase the prevalence. So that sounds like a bad thing. So you started with something that sounded like a good thing, preventing deaths, and you end up with something that sounds bad, increasing the prevalence. Uh, maybe, maybe increasing prevalence is not necessarily a bad thing because we have more people who are alive. They're just living with the disease now. Now, how do you get water into the tub? Well, obviously through the faucet. And so we turn the faucet on, and this will have actually the uh, effect of ri uh, raising the water level and therefore increasing the prevalence, because the prevalence, remember, was the amount of water in the tub. So what does the faucet's water represent? Well, that represents incidence. Now, you can crank this faucet all the way open so water rushes into the tub really fast, and that would be a high incidence rate, or you could have it uh, turned almost all the way off so it's just kind of trickling in, and that's a low incidence rate. So incidence adds to the tub, but it adds uh, based on how quickly the water is coming in. So one way to think about this is that prevalence is equal to the incidence times however long water stays in the tub. And so what that really means, how long water stays in the tub, is however long people have the disease. And they're, the way they get rid of disease is either by being cured or dying. So prevalence equals the incidence times the, the, the duration of disease. And so this video hopefully showed you the relationship between incidence and prevalence using our bathtub model as well as this equation. And that's it for this one. This is a short video. we got one more we're going to go through, which is going to talk about a couple special cases of incidence. Okay. See you later. Bye.